Welcome back everyone and today we have some pretty exciting news to share with you. It is uh, very exciting although the thumbnail has probably given it away. Do you want to let them know what's happening? Well we are getting Halter. We are getting Halter. <laughs> We've signed up for it. If you're from New Zealand chances are you've heard of Halter or you know what they are. But if you don't know what it is, it is cow collars. They're new cow collars that have solar panels on them. So that gives charge to them and they're all GPS and it enables us to be able to fence our cows virtually so we can take away the brake fences all together but the really cool thing is I'll be able to shift them on my phone through the app. So it is very exciting times on farm, I'm looking excited to it, you? Um, you sure are. Yeah. Now and can I shift them on my phone as well? Yep, you'll be able to do it, we'll both have the app. Yep. Yep, so I'll do my herd. You can do you can do both of them. If I'm away, you can do them. If I'm away, yep. I can set up the brakes pre-planned before I go and, and you just have to... There'll be a bit of a learning curve around it, but yeah, it is exciting. So it's also very exciting to be able to show you, you guys it as well uh, on our journey. So I guess the journey starts now. So the first step of the process is Jack's come down from Auckland and he's actually mapping it at the moment. So he's going around with the drone mapping the farm and you're getting the height. Yep. Height, height of the height. paddocks yep. and just taking a visual map of features of the land which gives more accuracy to the map that gets made up which goes into the into the app it's on a predetermined course so it's like on a racetrack at the moment and it's just going along taking photos so what do you what do you reckon it is down to about a centimeter three centimeters three centimeters Usually after all the processing everything everything gets down to about three which isn't bad it's pretty good on to step number two dad's come down for this one we've got a meeting here with lucy lucy's running us through or what are you running us through today just just things about halter yeah we're really focusing on uh how the collar interacts with the cow um, and focusing on what the main features and functionalities are of the collar and getting these guys all prepped and ready to go. Because we are collaring next week, so we want to keep all this nice and relevant. Yeah, we definitely do. So we'll focus with that on our Friday session as well. Yeah, so we've got two of these. Today's one's an hour, and then we've got one on Friday as well. Today's Monday. On to step number three. Stacey's come out today, and she's just running me through um, sort of like the app and, and what to expect. Pretty cool. So you are my rep? Yep, customer success rep. So I'm pretty much here to make sure you get value out of the product. So if I have any questions, any queries, anything like that, yep. Come go to, to you. Easy. Beautiful. I've had a delivery turn up this morning. Whoa, that must be it there. Oh, is it that one too? Oh, two of those. Sweet. That brings it to step number four. And it kind of gives it away right there, solar. So this is the gear for the solar towers. And this must mean these are the collars right here. Should we take a little sneak peek? It's exciting. It is getting closer and closer to collaring. Oh, check this out. This is what's inside the box here. So this is the unit that turns all the collars on, there's a magnet in there because they have to be turned on manually and pull this cardboard out and there they are, check that out oh, oh, oh. look how smart that looks it's so light too these are the solar panels here which keep them charged and that's like Gorilla Glass I think they call it over top of it so it's very very durable there's an arrow there under the halter logo so that's got to point towards the cows nose when we're putting them on but we need to assemble the weight because we've got to put a weight on the bottom of that everything's labeled pretty nicely we'll pull the weight out and assemble one out. yeah it is pretty sure there's no specific way the weight has to go it can go either way can it yeah it must be able to and there we go that is the whole unit there i don't think my cows next will be this big so i'll have to adjust it on the day it's an absolutely stunning morning for the install Up a mark. 
There we go, all in. So it looks pretty smart. It is very, very easy to put it in as well. Once you get the hang of it, everything's color coded and step by step in the instruction here, the colors even match the colors on the tower. So you can't get much easier than that. I will go back over the tower process in another video though. We're on to, I guess you could call it the fifth step now. So I'm back with Lucy. Lucy's come in person this time. I know. And we are doing our second onboarding session. Luke's also here as well. He sorted out the towers for me. Um, I actually sent him an email uh, regarding like the placement and, and he sorted it out. So it's good to meet him in person. But they were collaring over in, uh, we'll call it Wangamata. I think yeah. it's in between Wangamata and Furutoa. It was, Somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. So, uh, there were they, some Jersey cows out there as well. Yeah, so it was a good day collaring for them and they thought they'd just call in on the way back and do it in person. So it's actually pretty handy. You also had to drop some stuff off for me too. So. It all worked out. So each time you want to draw a break, so oh, you'll yeah. notice as you're moving your pin around. Yeah, can you oh, see yeah, it's kind it, of yeah, pulling? Yeah, it actually, yeah. yeah. The second session of onboarding is, is all over and I think I've got my head around it, although I was saying, well, and Lucy sort of agreed that you've sort of got to do it to, to learn a bit too. So might make mistakes in the first couple of days, but it's all about me learning and, and, and I'll get better. It's a lot to sort of process at first, but We'll get it. That's right, you've got lots of support. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that's the good thing about Holter. There is so much support <laughs> yeah. there that, that it's readily available and yeah. and yeah. Next step's preparation. So many hands make light work as they say. And we're just gonna try and blow a few through a few of these. And then me and dad are gonna go through tomorrow and turn them all on the day before collaring. We're almost at the end. That's the last two boxes of collars there. We've, we've enforced a little bit of child labor as well. Everything's going, going good. After you do a few of them, you certainly get good at it pretty quickly. And I don't know what it takes to do one, maybe about 15 seconds, 10 seconds maybe. So pretty quick. There's a couple of little steps though. We're only putting on one side too. So it's just through. Do the buckle up through the sort of safety catch and then just into the padded foam there. Just like that. And then when we do put it on the cow tomorrow, obviously just do the other side and this just speeds it up for tomorrow. William. Hundred. Did you do a hundy? And what about you, Anna? I did fifty one. Whoa! I've brought all the collars up to the cow shed today. I've also turned all of the ones that are inside at the moment on. You can see the lights flashing on them. They're in standby mode for tomorrow. They've got enough power inside the collars to last for 48 hours before they sort of need to recharge themselves. So I've turned them on the day before as you do. It just makes things easier. Like I could turn it on tomorrow morning when we do them, but if everything's prepared now, it should just go way smoother. And it is so simple to turn them on. All you do is you've got this key and grab the collar, the batteries down that end. So you just put it on like this. Lights come on, bingo, go time. To be fair though, the whole process has been easy. They make it as easy as possible for you. And it certainly helps, but you can absolutely fly through this bit. There is also a little mark on there, right there. I hope you can see that, that is the power symbol too. So if you hold the magnet over that, turns it on. But I found if you just grab it and do the opposite end to that, you sort of find a rhythm in it and it's real easy. I think I'm gonna leave these ones though. Till tomorrow, I've got enough in there at the moment to do the big herd or the older cows. There's probably 180 of them. Uh, and I've turned it up on to do them, and then while we bring the younger ones into the shed, I'll just stay here and turn those on, because it won't take long at all, plus we'll have a couple of helpers, so if we get two people on it, it'll be 
it'll be real fast. D-Day, today is the day, step number seven, collaring. The girls are heading up nicely. It's actually quite windy today, so it's nice and cool. Get up. There we go, fit in nicely. I was speaking to Lucy this morning, got everything sorted for what I need to do. Just a bit of a refresher about putting them on. Hoping to get a couple of people down from Hull to help, but they're all too busy and it is after the new year, so fair enough. Me and Dad are just gonna tick away and we're not gonna start training them for a couple of days. So that is actually quite good because we can tick away with this herd if we don't get them all done or we'll see what time we finish them then we can do the young ones tomorrow. So that'll be, uh, that'll probably work out all right. We are into it. Dad is smoking along. I thought it would be the easiest to do them in the pit here. Like we have got this vet race here, but you can only sort of get four cows in at a time. And these cows should be pretty good because they've already had collars on. And what do you reckon so far? Yep, doesn't seem to worry them, does it? Yeah, I think they're easy. Like they're, they're used to sort of having something around their neck and and uh, yeah, it's, I think it's much easier. So I'm assigning the collars. What's the next couple of numbers? 204. 204. And it's easy as to assign them. You just do it all on your phone. 204. Next, put it in the high group. Got to make sure that green light is flashing. Scan collar, uh, ready to scan. And then it just works like an Apple wallet. There we go, assigned. Next air tag. What's the next one? 13. Number 13. 13. Next, highs, add. That's number 13. Just one thing we've got to make sure we're doing is because they're pretty symmetrical, this arrow here though needs to be pointing towards the cow's nose. We don't want to get them the wrong way around, then these cows might be walking backwards in the paddock, so it's pretty important. The other night when we put them together, we put them on the fifth hole here. See there's a heap of double holes. We all put them on the fifth hole and then you can either put them one bigger on the six for the bigger cows or four for the sort of smaller ones. Because Lucy was doing Jersey cows on farm, she said that they did it on the fifth hole, so that worked well for us. And, and if you can get your hand in the top here like this, that means it's not too tight, but you don't want it swishing around either so i'd say that is pretty snug these are pretty stiff at the moment but they will flex up a bit over time and and sit a bit better interested to see how long it takes to do a row so now that i've opened the gate i'll turn the stopwatch on and we'll see how long uh, row takes and that is 11 minutes 30 seconds 60 divided by 11.5 equals 5.2 rows an hour times six yeah so we're getting through 80 cows an hour which that's pretty good going i reckon and we could go a little bit faster mum's going to come down soon and she's just going to scan them so that row we went on well we went through both of us and put all the collars on and then i just went through when there's about five or six cows to go and and scan each collar to their number and that worked better so when mum comes down i reckon it'll be way faster again bit of a smoko break what have you got in there Vincent cheese. Some good old New Zealand pie. Yep. Look, it's full of meat too. It's beautiful. Mmm. We are absolutely smoking along now. It is speeded up big time having two of us collaring. The phone can't actually keep up. We've only got two full rows left to go. But I'm not going to do the young herd today. Don't need to. We'll just do it tomorrow. There's only a hundred odd cows in there, so it should only take an hour and a half at most. But what I might do tomorrow is get Dad's phone going as well, so we can scan or we'll connect them up because that's yeah, that's the slow part at the moment. Is that it? Yeah. There we go. That is all of the high mob done. It is ten past two and I'm pretty sure we started at about 12 maybe a little bit before so it took about two two and a quarter hours which isn't too bad 185 animals don't they look so smart I think I'm gonna have to adjust some of them in the morning see like this it's on the side there I'm not sure whether I'll put them on too loose or once they give a little bit they'll sit better on top of the the neck there there's, there's a few of them though, so maybe I'll, I'll have a look in the morning and see what they're like. If they need adjusting, I can do it then. Just really the old one, this number 20 here, that probably is 
Yeah, maybe, yeah, that's too loose. I did actually give her another hole. I put it on the sixth one because she is a bigger cow, but she doesn't need it. But my farm map is currently in the process of getting sorted because if I go into it, you can see all the red dots which are there around the feed pad. So those are all the cows. And then see how this is sort of like a lighter shade of white. And that means the paddock is, or if I go into it, see effective area. And then it needs more info to give like leaf stage and average cover, etc. Uh, but if I zoom out, you can see all the white sort of shaded area. Those are all the paddocks that have been done. Uh, again, if I click into it, the little water droplets, those are the troughs. And then there's gates in there as well. However, I'm not too worried. I was told it would either get done tonight or tomorrow. And I still need to do the other herd, which will tackle in the morning. And I also need to have a catch up with Lucy again on just what to do now that the collars are on. The cows need to get trained. They need to learn their cues. I haven't talked about cues yet. And it's one of the big things around the collars. But I will talk about that in the future. I'm still getting my head around it. It's a lot to take in at the start and there's still a lot more to learn. So it's not just the cows that are learning, it's also myself included. Tell you what though, I can't wait till I can stop using these real and standards and park them up. It is absolutely amazing technology though, and there's a lot you can do with it, a lot more to come. So as I said earlier on, I, I can't wait to take you on this journey that I'm on with it. It is seriously seriously cool and exciting very exciting times ahead however that will pretty much wrap it up for this video guys hopefully you enjoyed the surprise that i had for you it was a bit of a good one and also the steps of the process up until now but apart from that see you next time